Well, hello all you beautiful people. You know what time it is. Ladies and gents, guys and dolls, and everyone in between. Gather round. Get you something real nice to sip on and comfy to slip on. Cause it's time for Smut Club. Here's your hosts, Chelsea and Hannah. Hey everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Smut Club, where we talk about the pressure of clapping. <laughs> I, I hated that. Yep. I'm Hannah. And I... I'm I'm Chelsea. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're starting off really strong. We are. Right and to be totally honest, that's probably the energy we need to bring to this book review today. I meant to tell you before we started, please ask any questions that you have because my outline doesn't make sense because the book doesn't make sense. But maybe through your questions, we can... Maybe we can make sense of it. Okay, so my job here is really to help you process this book yes. into being a cohesive yes. unit of art. Yeah. Got yeah. it. No pressure. So this is A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. Um, <clears throat> it is a monster romance. Okay. All right. So in this like universe that we are in there are demons that eat people and this girl Rhea lives in a village and they all believe that she's cursed because her whole family was killed by demons but she somehow survived so instead of being like oh my gosh we're so glad that you're okay they were like Cursed. So it's like a reverse Harry Potter. Yes. Like when he survived, he's the chosen one. And when right. she survives, she's cursed. And if that's not modern day misogyny, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so there are there's this other kind of like demon hybrid thing called a dusk walker. Dust or dusk? Dusk. Okay. Like, like like the sun is setting. It is now it's, dusk. It is dusk oh, with a hard K. Sorry. Sorry about the hard K. I just really wanted to make sure to just spit a little. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so there are dusk dusk walkers um, that are some kind of like demon hybrid thing. And one of them every 10 years goes to – he has this rotation of villages. Okay. So he goes to a different village – and gets a a bride and then casts a protection spell on the village to protect them from other demons. My, my mic just wobbled. I didn't even touch it. You didn't. Hannah can attest to the fact that I did not touch it. I can. Apparently, this is just where this mic has wanted to <laughs> That's live. That's just I've, where it's I've meant to be. It. I, I moved it up. My husband moved it down. I moved it up. It moved down on its own. So this is where this mic lives now. And that's okay. It is okay. So, well, that's nice of him to cast a protective. Mm -hmm. But where? what happens to the wives? That's a great question. So no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> great question. No answer. <laughs> Got so, it. So every 10 years he shows up at a different village and gets a new bride. And there are all these like urban legends essentially about where the bride what happened to the other brides but Rhea has been voluntold by the village that she's going to be the bride this time and she's like honestly I don't want to do that but also I don't really want to live here because it's sort of like a yeah. full Amish shun like they don't acknowledge mm. her existence and if they do they just throw things at her or, like, you know, like, they make it really difficult for her to live. Yeah. She's like, I mean, choosing the best of two bad options is right. really where she's at. Right. Being a monster bride mm -hmm. could ultimately be, be a better life. She's like, well, maybe I'll just go with him and then run later and start over in a different 
place where nobody knows that I'm, like, cursed or whatever. Maybe it'll be a really nice, like, sister wives situation. Could and be. she'll become besties with all of the other brides. That could be, but that's not what happens. <laughs> so the I'll dust walker. version. It, he he shows up. It's a whole thing. Um, he – so it goes back and forth between her perspective and his. Okay. So um, she uh, – Nobody has ever, like, she's, like, 26, I think, and nobody's ever really touched her or interacted with her, like, in any way since her family died. And so she is resentful, understandably. Mm. She's pretty angry. But apparently demons can smell fear. And so when the Duskwalker shows up, his name is Orpheus. When Orpheus shows up, he's, like, she doesn't smell like fear. That's really weird. Because um, mm. fear makes him hungry. And he eats people. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But is that. This is going to be a weird question. Is that the same as being sexually attracted to them? Or fear just makes him hungry and then he eats. So it's not like a weird situation where it's like. the. He gets, like, horny based on the fear. He just gets hungry. He just gets hungry. Okay. And, like, flies into a rage and just starts eating people. Well, so this is actually a best-case scenario. Right. We so love this. We do. And he's like, well, okay, I guess it's, I guess she's coming with me. That sounds good. So he casts the protection spell. He has, like, an antelope skull for a head. Okay. And he doesn't have eyeballs. Who needs them? He has orbs that glow different colors based on his mood. His, like, standard is, like, a light blue color glowing orb. Does she have a color key to his mood ring eyes? She does not. She will eventually start to piece it together. Got it. Um, so he's, like, super tall. He's wearing human clothing, human-type clothing. And she's, like, I guess we're doing this. And he's, like come along and just like starts walking through the woods and she's trying to keep up with him and really can't um because she's in like a wedding dress and little slippers in the snow trying to like run to keep up with him the the village put her in a wedding dress to present her to him thank you you could see it on my face i could yeah (laughs) you're like Mm-hmm. Like, they were like, hey, this monster bro is going to show up any day now, so here's a wedding dress to mm-hmm. just really signify that you're the one. You're the one. Yeah. Okay. And they presented him with other options, too, because they were like, he might not want the cursed one. She's cursed, after all. And he was like, no, I want that one. So it was a whole thing that I didn't feel the need to go into detail for, but... You know, that's fair. So, um... His whole thing, though, is that the bride has to be willing. They cannot be coerced. And so he's, like, asking, like, are you willing before he takes her? And she's like, yep, sure am. I'm totally willing. (laughs) The village leader is behind her, like, giving her, like, this stink eye, like, don't fuck this up for us. Um, And so in Orpheus's perspective, he just wants companionship. He's just super lonely. He's been alive for hundreds of years and he's Aww, just like, I hi. just I just want somebody to come hang out with me. Like that's literally it. But all of his his offerings in the past cuz he's had both male and female brides offerings whatever. They will either try to run from him and get really scared and then he eats them or which he feels super bad about. He's it's a very weird juxtaposition because he has the most like cinnamon roll energy ever, mm-hmm. but he eats people. <laughs> and so it's a very difficult thing to get around. But he feels really bad that he's eaten all these people, right? So um or they try to run from him and he has a home that has all this protection around it. They get outside the protection and then other demons will eat them. Mm. And it, like, really upsets him every single time. So he's like, I may not. So he hasn't wanted to have to replace no. his bestie bride. No. Um, and so he's like, you know, 
I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this because this is really fucking depressing. Like, but I don't want to be alone. So I guess I'm just going to keep doing it. And here we are. Here's Rhea. Let's, let's go, I guess. So, um, she keeps falling, trying to run to keep up with him. Mm -hmm. And eventually he just like scoops her up with one arm. He's huge. Like scoops her up with one arm and like covers her with his cloak (laughs) to like keep her warm. And she's like, well, that's kind of nice. And like falls asleep because he's like rocking her essentially while he's walking. She falls asleep a little bit. Um, she wakes she up. She felt really safe. Well, apparently, or really tired. It had been a long day Touché. for her. Um, so she wakes up at one point because he starts, like, snarling. She's like, the fuck is that? These demon hunters show up, and they're like, finally, we're going to kill the dusk walker. And he is pissed. Apparently, when he gets injured, he will also fly into a rage. So they shot him with an arrow or something, and he lost his fucking mind. And um, one of the, she's like, oh, awesome. Like, can you take me to a new village? She's like, demon hunters don't seem so bad. Let's go. And one of them is like, you're bait, bitch. Shut up. And she's like, nope, I didn't like that. <laughs> like, That's not how I thought this was going to go. Mm. So Orpheus eats all of them. And she starts running from him. And then she remembers that earlier he had said something about he likes the chase. Mm. Like, Or whatever. So she's like, what would happen if I just stop? So she does. She just stops. And he, like, tackles her. His eyes are bright red. And he opens his his jaws, his antelope jaws, and basically puts her entire head in his mouth. And she just starts laughing. And he licks her face. And he's like, you don't taste like food. She's like okay <laughs> i'm glad yeah i mean how do you how are you supposed to take that in I that don't moment know. when you're you've been told that you're food yeah and then he's like ew well it wasn't ew it was just like a huh you don't taste like food he didn't seem disgusted he just was like i don't want to eat you i stand by my ew <laughs> because quite frankly <laughs> if I am about to chow down on someone and then I go, oh, that's not food. Ew. <laughs> it's really more how I had that in my head. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. We could stick with it. Um, so after all of this, um, he, uh, he picks her back up. They walk. They go to what's called the veil, which is where all the demons live. So they get to the veil, and he's like, you need to be silent because if any of the demons know there's a human, they're going to come at you. So be silent. Don't move. She's covered by his cloak. And he's like, none of them are going to approach because they're terrified of me because I will fuck a demon up. No problem. Because he's basically indestructible. Because she had been all worried about, well, you got shot with arrows. Like, let me patch you up. And he was like, well, that's super cute that she wants to patch me up. I'm, I promise I'm fine. He's but like, it did nothing. Yeah. Um, apparently, they heal within 24 hours. So whatever injury a dust walker has, pretty much of any kind, will heal automatically. Even if you cut their head off, their body will grow back in 24 hours. So How do you kill one? By cracking their skull, we will eventually learn that that's the only way. Sorry to... It's to crush a skull. To to take that from future you. That's okay. It doesn't... It's not a big reveal, you know? So, um, he's like... It's endearing to him that she wants to take care of him. So, he's like, well, that's really sweet. Um, But he... They get back to his home, and she's thinking he's going to bring her back to a cave or something. But he has a, a really cute little cottage. And she's like, oh, oh. There's, like, a, a vegetable garden. Aw. There's, like, furniture and a hearth for her to cook on. So, I am a little... You said that it wouldn't make sense. And so I did far, say that. I'm tracking. And he seems so endearing. He is really endearing. And honestly, maybe it's that... Okay. 
total honesty, I did not want to outline this book. Like deep within my soul, I didn't want to do it. So <laughs> take a sip of alcohol. I will. I will yeah. do that. Thank you for take an alcohol. Thank you for inviting me to do well, that. You, you've been talking so much. You haven't had a chance. <laughs> so I looked everywhere I could think of to find an outline for this so I didn't have to do it because we'll get to the part that I really didn't want to deal with. But I was like, I'm just, I looked on Reddit. I was Googling all kinds of shit. Couldn't find anything. I downloaded no, no less than four fucking AI bots and asked them to outline it. Every single time didn't. I've like just wanted to see if Chat GPT could like outline a book for me. It'll say it's the title and author and it is always the wrong book. Correct. Yeah. So I was deeply disappointed by that. But most, okay, I should take it back. The story does largely make sense. It's the details of it that are like, Mm, okay. Uh, I actually really liked the story. It was just some of the details were like, why did we, we made a choice, mm. but why was that the choice we made? I see. You know? Yeah. So she gets to the house. He has all these like little trinkets and stuff hanging up and like circles of stuff on the ground. And it's all protection for, for the home from the demons. Um, and, um, She's, like, super confused that he has a house. So she's like, what the hell is this? And he's like, oh, I had a companion about 200 years ago, and she wanted a home, and so I built it for her. And she's like, oh, well, what happened to her? And he's just like, she's gone. They ate her. No, it's worse. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. It's worse. To me, I think it's worse. Well, it's worse for Orpheus. But, um... So, um, he's very particular with her, like, do not go outside these boundaries, Mm -hmm. like, don't touch the little, like, charms and stuff, don't do anything, like, just stay safe. Um, but he's like, obviously she's not scared of me, but she Mm. doesn't like me either. Like, I don't think that she's gonna stick around. Um, so she tries to run, she doesn't make it far because demons, um, He gets her into the house, and um, he fills up a bathtub with his blood. I see the pivot. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, no, keep keep going. (laughs) So he, he like, she describes he, like, cuts his wrist and, like, starts bleeding over the tub and does some weird chant thing, and then the tub fills with water because he's magic and he's like, you can't drink this, but you can bathe in it. And she's like, okay, well I'll take, he, he pulled a reverse Jesus, I guess, but it wasn't wine. It was blood. Right. Yeah. A reverse Jesus with a different liquid. (laughs) Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Don't drink this water, though. It is of my body. Don't drink it. Mm, This really brings us back to that. What would... Ew. (laughs) What would your communion be? Yeah, what would your communion be if you were a deity? (laughs) Oh. So, she's like, okay, well, thank you. Like, I'm really excited to take a bath. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I have to bathe you. And she's like, no, I don't think we're doing that. Like, thank you so much for offering, but I can bathe myself. He's like, no, you don't understand. You have human smell all over you. Demons are going to be, like, beating down the door, essentially. I have to do a spell over you while I bathe you to hide your scent. And she's like, no, I'm not doing that. And he's, like, super adamant about it. So eventually she gives in. He leaves his gloves on the whole time. He's super respectful. She's like, this is the weirdest fucking thing that has ever happened to me, and I don't like it. This is the weirdest. She's had a lot of things happen to her. (laughs) And not saying this one is normal. Well, I think it's more she's, like, waiting for him to do something. Like, she's waiting for him to, like, eat her 
or touch her in a way she doesn't want or something. And he's just really sweet the whole time. Yeah, like, it could pivot. But at present, I feel like I'm fucking with Orpheus. Yes. I do fuck with Orpheus. He is actually super duper sweet. He's just, like, out here trying his best and wants to be seen and known and loved. Like, all beings do. Right. Not humans. Not He's not humans. a human. All, no. Like, all beings. They just want to be seen and known and loved. Yeah, like Brandon. Bless my sweet dog. Precious boy. I was a couple drinks in about a week or two ago and started crying to Vance about how much I love our cat. <laughs> and then I was like, Vance, he's the longest relationship of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. Because I've had, Craig just turned nine earlier this month, and I've had him since he was a kitten. So, yeah, I'm like, he's the longest relationship of my life. And Vance was like, don't you love Brandon and Craig equally? And I'm like, (laughs) almost equally, yes. I was like, but there's like a point zero 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 one percent that like Craig edges out just Mm -hmm. because like he was like... He was my cat before I had Brandon. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. He's um, the ride or die. I get it. Yes. Craig is my little ride or die. Literally, he rides around on my shoulder. <laughs> and it happened again. We were in another work meeting. Like a really serious, like, all of the higher ups, like our chief medical officer, everyone is on this link. <laughs> and fucking Craig pops up on my shoulder. <laughs> and even our chief medical officer, ooh, a cat. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, yep. Yep. This is Craig. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah. But no, I. Brand, although, like, Craig is my red or die, I do feel like Brandon wants to be seen and known and loved more than Craig wants <laughs> that to is be accurate. seen and known and loved. Just when he leans on me, it makes me feel really special. It makes me feel seen and, and known and loved. And he does that little thing where he, like, rests his, like, he nuzzles with his chin. Yeah. Which is really saying something because he's a pug, so he doesn't have a lot of chin or jawline no. to work with. <laughs> He is using what he has, and we can appreciate that. He just does this little, like, chin rest over. Like, he'll do it on the couch on your shin when he's sitting between your legs, and it's just the purest moment. My pit bull does that. She'll, like, come over and lay her head on my shoulder, and I'm just like, yep, I'll die for you. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, when I had those few drinks and I was telling Vance about how obsessed I was with my cat, (laughs) not a euphemism. (laughs) Um, she is hairless. <laughs> hey. hey. He is hairless. His name is Craig. <laughs> My husband just walked <laughs> in the room as I made that joke. <laughs> um, but <laughs> My husband was like, so I know you really love Brandon and Craig, but just to be clear, should there ever be an emergency, you will say Ford first, <laughs> right? And I was like, yes, honey, I'm not a monster. I'm going to save my human child. Before I save my cat, I was like, however, in a perfect world, I'm a superhero and can save all three. In a perfect world, Vance would be paying enough attention that he could get the kid and you can get the cat. Right? I'm like, we will both be present and we can help each other out. If it is just on me, my hope is I can save all three. Yeah, absolutely. But Vance was like, okay, I just needed to, like, make sure. He's like, I just needed to th- – d- he goes, I just needed to hear the words from your mouth that you would say Ford first. And I'm like, what do you think of me I was mom? just like, what? And he's like, you're a great mom. What are you talking about? I was like, did you actually think it needed to be said? He's like, Chelsea, I don't think you understand how emphatically you were talking about your love <laughs> for Craig. I understand. Yeah. I do. You feel the same about your pets. I do. I do. Fred – is absolutely the best thing that's ever happened to anybody ever. And so that's that's that. Yeah. Fred. I know. Precious. How are Fred's meds doing lately? <laughs> Fred's meds are good. Fred's meds are good. She still smells like bacon bits. And she's just living her best life. She fell off of the windowsill into our bathtub in our master bathroom. So now we don't really have a tub in our master bathroom anymore because my husband filled it with blankets and an old egg crate and pillows so that when she falls, because she's a little bit high on phenobarb and gabapentin, when she falls, she will have a cushioned landing. 
bless Matt. I know. That's so sweet. I know. Also, I would like to go back really fast to the hairless cat joke I made. Because <laughs> I would like to be very clear that that is Craig's breed type. He's Correct. a Devon Rex. I do not shave him. Um, <laughs> You didn't try out one of those at-home laser treatments on him? No. Mm. Although my parents do buy me one of those every, like, couple of years for Christmas. Mm. And by every couple of years, it may be, like, once a decade. But they've definitely bought me two different, More than like, one. home laser hair <laughs> things. <laughs> the first, I remember they bought me the first one over a decade ago. I was in grad school. <laughs> but I remember it because it just, it singed your hair with the right. laser. And my roommate came in. In and she's like, why does our apartment reek of burned hair? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. We couldn't get the smell out for like a week. <laughs> it smelled, I was like, I'm so sorry, Lauren. I had no idea. That is a really bad smell. Yeah. Yeah. And they bought me another one, I think, in the last year or two. And then by the time I was like, maybe I'll try this, I was pregnant. And it was like, the box was like, we cannot state clearly enough. Do not use this if you are with child. Huh. And I was like, I have some questions about if I should be using it without child. Right. Huh. I'm saying. I'm going to Google that later. I have questions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I apparently have more questions than I realized. <laughs> I didn't know I had them until this moment. Okay. So they're doing the bath blood to water bathing ritual thing. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. Um so lots of little things happen where they're like after this where they start to get to know each other a little bit better. Um she <clears throat> he has like her own little room set up for her. Um he uh gets her she he has stuff in the house for her to like sew so she can make some clothes for herself and like her little garden she said she wanted to eat in the garden in the sunshine because it doesn't the sun doesn't shine as often in the veil as it does mm. in the regular world and so she's like well when the sun is out I'd really like to to be in it you mm -hmm. know and he's like okay so he builds her a little table outside so she can eat in her garden Orpheus. and i know like he go he leaves her for a couple of days to go hunting and like bring food back for her and all this stuff um and she starts to see like different colors in his eyes and she's starting to like connect things so she asks him to teach her how to make the charms to protect the house and he's like you you want to learn from me like nobody's ever asked that and she's like, you've been collecting brides for 200 years and no one has ever asked to learn? That's dumb. Well, maybe if they had, she wouldn't be there because they'd be alive. Maybe so. So they do all of that. She makes him like little decorations for his antlers, like with Aww. some of the stuff that they're making charms out of. And so his eyes turn like bright yellow, which apparently means he's really happy. Um, and she's like, well, that's super cute. Um, so, uh, they are getting to know each other a little bit more. He explains he's hungry all the time. Like he's never mm. satisfied even after he eats. Um, and like she, she's really confused about why he takes brides in the first place. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, the only way for me to be satisfied, for me to be full, is for a human to give me their soul. And I've, I've given up on a human ever doing that. Now I just would like someone to hang out with me. Like, that's it. Um, and so she's really, like, softening towards him. Will it kill the human? No. The human will have eternal life. Do they share the soul? So he doesn't give her any more detail. He doesn't seem to Damn know it, how Orpheus. it works. This is the first time I'm annoyed with you. I know. He doesn't seem to know how it works oh, either. Wow. Um, I mean, to his credit, no one's ever given him their soul before. So how right. would he fully know? He's like, do I hold it? I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, maybe we could strike a mutually beneficial deal right. here. Right. Um, but he doesn't even approach that. Like, he doesn't mm -hmm. ask her. He he just tells her the information. Um 
So he he's continuing to protect her. Super sweet. Um, the baths have to happen like either once a day or once every couple of days. I don't remember. Um, and so oh, they that wasn't a one and done. No. So they start to get more like sexy time ish. Oh. Um, where he's just lingering a little bit longer and things like that. And she is excited by that. She's like, Am I attracted? to this antelope headed person i've never seen his whole body <laughs> i've never really seen any other part of him but also if she was cursed this is probably the first time someone has paid a lot of attention mm -hmm. to her doodles and bits yep so i can't remember how it all exactly happens um but at some point she like goes into his room and he doesn't have a bed he has like a nest in there that he has made and um she sees him with his cock out, and it's huge, and has some frills on it. Though That's the word. Not, like, decorations. No. I, I was imagining, like, cilia, like, little hairs, kind of. That's what I imagined when it said frills. I was thinking of the movie Office Space with all of the <laughs> flare, the flare, the pieces of flare. Yes. When you said frills, I was Listen, thinking flare. His dick has a lot of flare because it <laughs> it also has tentacles. So she, Whoa. so it's like wrapped in tentacles. He has a seam, as we have seen in other of the monster books I have reviewed. He has a seam. And the his dick comes out of it, but it's wrapped in these tentacles because apparently the air I'm I'm gonna stop doing hand motions. The air <laughs> I love that you just actually sat on your hands. <laughs> no. <laughs> Keep going with the hand motions, Hannah. His dick doesn't like the air. And so <laughs> so the tentacles are like protecting it or whatever. So they're, like, wrapped around it. But then she goes to touch it, and the tentacles, like, hold on to her hand. And she gives him a handy with his tentacles all up in her shit. And she's like, well, this is interesting. And he fingers her at some point or something. Does he have human fingers? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that was like, oh, damn. <laughs> No. Thought we were going to skirt past that one. He has retractable claws. So she's like freaked out like please don't slice me up. Like oh god. Yes. Which is a valid fear. Um and we learn that as after the sexy times begin um and they continue to get to know each other, we learn that he Dusk, all dusk walkers are essentially born as darkness, like they're amorphous little dark things. And once they start eating, they take on the characteristics of whatever they've eaten. So hmm. the first thing he ate was an antelope. So that's how he got the, the skull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then he she sees more of his body. He's got like fur on it and some feathers and some fish scales somewhere. He's like a little collage. Yeah. So these are all the different things he's eaten. And then he, he explains that the first time he ate a human was essentially an accident because he didn't have any intelligence. He was just an animal essentially. Mm. So he just happened upon a hunter in the woods ate this human and started to gain knowledge and empathy and emotion and understanding. Mm. And so he continued to eat humans to build his intelligence and to become more human, essentially. Huh. Mm-hmm. So um, you are what you eat is how it, how it all works. Yeah. So I'm just imagining being the author of this book and being like, how do I make you are what you eat, but sexy? <laughs> <laughs> but is it sexy? I don't. How did you feel when reading about the tentacle handy? Was there anything about it that you were like, oh, this is intriguing? Or were you like, this is something that I'm reading very clinically? Right it, it's more, it was more like, um, 
watching a nature documentary. Was it intriguing? Mm. Yes. Did I have questions? Also, yes. Was I into it? No. <laughs> like, Touché. okay. Yeah. Um, so I also, speaking of nature documentaries. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Do, oh, I no. don't know. I don't know. Well, because this book is, it stresses me out. So a long time ago, when Snoop did Plazanet Earth, I showed it to my father, who still thinks it's one of the funniest things he's ever seen, and tries, like, we'll just add, like, like he thought Plazan at Earth was a really funny title, and I think maybe at least once whenever we see my parents, he makes some sort of, like, trying to, like, make a, like, a turn of phrase or, like, a play off of it, but, like, my dad really fucked with <laughs> Plazan at Earth. And to be fair, I like it more than most nature documentaries. I would agree. It's all about the narration. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're like, we we got this really regal sounding narrator. <laughs> David Attenborough yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and I'm like, cool. And I'm just going to doze off while I watch. Like, yeah. But when Snoop does it, I'm like, I'm invested. I'm engaged all the way. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you haven't watched Plazana Earth, maybe not 10 out of 10, would recommend. But did it start as a Kimmel bit? I don't know. Going on a I don't know either. very unnecessary tangent here. But That's just, okay. Just processing out loud. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Yeah. That's what most of this is for me right now, just trying to process out loud. Okay. So we learned that you are what you eat. He, Yep, we are. And then... Um, he, there's a demon town that's, like, further into the Vale, and he is gonna go there to get supplies and stuff, and she wants to go with him, and he's, like, absolutely not. Like, it's really not safe. You can't mm. come. Okay. And another dusk walker shows up, and he is clearly less, he's eaten less humans than mm. Orpheus. He doesn't have a name, and he's like, will you give me one? And she's like, no. I don't think I will. Give me one what? A name. Oh. He's, she's like, I don't I don't think so, bud. Like, that's really important. That should be somebody who, like, who you really care about should give you a name, right? Aww. And he's, like, also cinnamon, cinnamon bun energy where he's, like, wanting to touch her and stuff. Not to be gross, but he's just super curious because he's never been this close to a human woman before. And so he's like got all these questions. And as soon as she's like, nope, nope, don't like that. He's like, okay. And like his eyes turn pink, like a reddish pink color, which apparently means they're embarrassed. And he's like, I'm really sorry. Um, and then of course Orpheus comes out and is like, I will literally crack your skull. Don't ever touch her again. <laughs> like, get away um but this little demon is like well i want i want a companion too will you teach me how to build a house and orpheus is like no i will not do that <laughs> and Rhea's like orpheus like go help him come on so he takes this other dusk walker they go to get supplies um i'm glad he's helping him i honestly got a little sad for a second well orpheus was like Rhea is my focus. I'm not, mm. I'm, why would I, no, you're very dumb. I had to figure it out on my own. I'm sure you can get there. Like, well, you had to eat a lot of humans and you can help him and save human lives. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just saying, Orpheus, don't be a selfish dick. He's not. He he's, does help. He's not. I just, I just want everyone to be successful. <laughs> we just want everybody to be happy. Yes. Oh, and I forgot. In all of this, Orpheus is also training Rhea to use a sword for protection. Um, okay. Which is really nice. Um, so, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. He goes to the demon town. He helps the other dusk walker. He comes back. Rhea is adamant that because he can't, his dick is so big, he can't get all the way in her. Mm. And she's like, but they've, I've. They've now tried. Yes. Okay. And I mean, they, they've been successful. He's just not fully in, 
Like, it's a partial situation for him. She's full up. But. Got it. That I was actually wondering that. I was like, is that. I was like, would more lube help? Or does she just. Her little human body only has so much room to give. Right. Okay. So she's like. You know, I'm like begging him essentially, like I want, I want all of you, I want all of you, and he's like, I can do that, but it's gonna, it's gonna change you, and she's like, do it, like I want you to do it, and he's like, are you sure? He's like super big on consent this whole time. Is like, are you positive? Are you really sure? She's like, yep. So while they're banging, he digs his claws into her belly for like his whole hand. And literally rearranges her guts so that his whole dick will fit. <laughs> your face. Oh, okay. Took me a second. I've, <laughs> I've processed. I accept. We can move forward. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. So after that, he like, and even before... He can't stop touching her. He wants to be banging her all the time. He's, like, super obsessed with her. And eventually she's like, Orpheus, babe, I need a break. And he's like, oh, oh, so you you don't you don't want to? Like, you just had to tell me, like, we don't have to. Like, I'm really – and she's like, sweetheart, I literally need a day for my body to just rest for a moment. That's all I'm asking for. Like, I'm not saying I don't ever want to have sex again. Yeah, just, like – We've been having sexcation. Yep. Nonstop. Nonstop. Please give me a moment. And he's like, oh, are you hurt? And she's like, no. And he's like, well, let me take care of you. And he's like making sure that she's okay (laughs) and like holding her. And, you know, he asked her to teach him how to cook for her um, so that he could make her things and all that stuff. It's very, very sweet. And he like immediately switches to caretaker mode. Um, which she's like, I'm kind of regretting that I told him I didn't want to bang because this is doing it for me. <laughs> so eventually more stuff happens. This book is over 500 pages, by the way, which is why I'm like skipping some oh. things. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm hitting all the major plot points, but I'm skipping some things because Here's it is thing, 500 Hannah. pages. Here's the thing. If you miss a major plot point, I'd never know. <laughs> Good point. So don't put that much pressure on yourself. Thank you. Because I will never know. Because also, (laughs) I'm not going to read it. I probably am not going to pick this one up. When there are seams involved, when there are (laughs) sexual seams, it's. I'd say that's more your book energy than my book energy. I I don't read a lot of monster books, Mm -hmm. and I feel like I've read one or two. But I feel like it's more like I'm like I'm like dipping a toe right in the monster water. Sure. Right. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, if they were still mostly human, that would really help me right. conceptualize. As I'm like testing out the waters. I can understand. And then I think some of the monster books that you read and review are just fully sending it. So when we talk about them, I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> I'm like, ooh. I need to be eased in. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, I mean, it's kind of like when you're reading, a, like, Reverse Harem, and you're like, we're just going to start with three dicks. <laughs> like, you're like, we're going to build – I read one book, and there were seven of them, and – like, and I feel like three of them had P names, and I just kept confusing all of them. And I'm like, there's too many. What did I read? The Seven Sins of Snow, I think, was like a Snow White retelling where there were seven. And I was like, what is ha-? Like, I can't logistically and just, I can't keep track of where all the dicks are. Yes. You know? Like, it's too much to track. At one point, you're like, did I count eight? <laughs> Right. You're like, wait, where did that one come from? Or one shows up and you're like, I forgot about that one. Holy shit. Like, quite frankly, the thought of being personally responsible <laughs> for the pleasure of seven dicks is exhausting. Yes. And I'm not saying if I weren't a kept woman, <laughs> but like, 
That's a full-time job. Kind of. I'm not working if there's an expectation that I'm sexually pleasing seven men because you know what i'd like to think that their incomes combined i was gonna say like i might be able to be supported yeah because yeah i'm like there's there's just not enough of you to go around right and i like read one of these books and this house out here like seven dicks deep bacon cakes being like the town healer and i'm like girl you are doing the most right now too exhausting truly i'm like like, mm. when do you sleep Right. I would be in the bed at all times. Like, you know where to find me. I understand my job, but this is where I live now. Well, but also, it seems like every time she would go to sleep, she'd wake up with someone in her bed touching her. <laughs> no. Stop touching me. And I feel like there would need to be two. I would need two mm-hmm. bedrooms, right? I'd yeah. be like, this is the bedroom that just has an open door policy. <laughs> <laughs> and this Come is the, one, come all. Right? And this is the bedroom where I actually sleep. And if I'm in that bedroom. Don't touch me. I need actual rest. Yes. Seven dicks is just. So much. If you're interested in reverse harem, we do recommend starting with three. <laughs> with a book with three. Otherwise, it's too overwhelming. We've also talked about this before, but reverse harem always makes me laugh when it's like the college or like yes. like the high I'm like, what all of these like 18-year-old high school students or freshmen in college completely ripped full tats and pierced dicks. Like, come on now. <laughs> come on. Okay, so back to the monster sex. <laughs> Clearly, it's easier for me to wrap my brain around seven dicks than it is with a sexual seam. (laughs) Honestly, I don't know which one is more mythical or unlikely, an 18-year-old with the kind of sexual prowess we read in some of these reverse harems or a monster with a seam. sexually confident women you will ever – Is this like 18 – and you know, I – I should have been more sexually confident when I, you know, um, mm-hmm. but I'm like, all of you are just, I was like, we, we grew up in very different households <laughs> if you are this sexually liberated. I mean, good I thought, for you. Yes. I was like a 17 year old, 18 year old. I don't know. Also, you like your body just doesn't have enough holes <laughs> or hands. You got some feet. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to think like. Now I'm using my. <laughs> well, well, but if you're using your feet, wouldn't that make it more difficult to use the holes you do have? Yoga. <laughs> but I okay. do feel like both feet would have to be for one. One, right? Yeah, we've so, we've topped out at six. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I've got three holes, two, two hands. hands. And one foot hybrid. <laughs> I mean, two feet for one dick, though. So, right, yeah, right, so right. six. Technically, does your body have other holes? Yeah. None that will not, work. Not that are going to be used for anything but what they were designed <laughs> for originally. Nothing but what the Lord intended. <laughs> That's the line. <laughs> Nothing but what the Lord intended. Ooh. <laughs> okay. On that note, where her guts are rearranged. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So That's she's where got we are. her rearranged guts. Yep. So then they have to go back to the demon town. She begs and begs and begs. And finally, Orpheus agrees to take her. Um, the, it takes a few days to get there. He carries her most of the way. It's very sweet. Um, they get there, and she's super overwhelmed because it's like a little city, and mm. there are just all these demons walking around in what are essentially human clothes and street vendors selling human meat. And she's like, mm. what the fuck is happening right now? Well, Orpheus didn't want to take you. Maybe yep. there was a reason. Uh, she's a little overwhelmed. Um, and then, um, Orpheus keeps, like, panicking that the demon king is going to see her or find out about her. 
And is he not allowed to have a human companion? So he is. Okay. Like the demons can essentially do whatever they want for the most part, but he's worried because the demon king hates the dusk walkers because He's trying to build an army, and the Duskwalkers all refuse to be a part of it. Mm. And because they're essentially indestructible, the Demon King doesn't know how to kill them. He hasn't found a way to do it. And so he is just pissed that he can't control them. So Mm -hmm. he's worried that the Demon King will do something to Rhea out of spite. Mm. Um, So she meets some demons who are really nice. Um, There is a giant white owl that is following them around and like leading Rhea places um leads her to a bookstore it's a whole thing um apparently the white owl is like a a friend protector of Orpheus she's the one that taught him how to plant the garden and stuff so Hedwig yes she also can transform into a human though so Okay, well, maybe less like Hedwig in that regard. Yeah. But still, um, I stand by it. Yes. And he, um, yeah, she showed Orpheus um, a lot of what he knows about humans, about how to plant the garden and mm. what they need and that kind of stuff. Um, so then Orpheus, they finally get home. They get their supplies. I'm sure there's other drama. Um They get home, and Orpheus shares the story of the original woman that he built the house for, and he explains that he really really loved her a lot, he thought, and that's why he built this house for her, but um, she was always really miserable and Mm. only ever wanted material things from him, jewelry and whatever, and he did everything that he could to keep her happy. And they were together for five years. But then at some point, she left him for the Demon King. Mm. So he shares the whole story. And then Rhea starts crying. And he's like, what? What's mm-hmm. happening? Why? <laughs> What's happening? And she's like, I'm just so sorry that happened to you. And he's like, you're crying for me? And it's this really sweet moment where he's like, you do care. And it's a nice little connection that they have um i feel like she had shown that she cared before that i think that he was afraid to believe that Mm, because he believed it about this original woman and then she like really destroyed his heart and basically told him he was a monster and she never wanted him to touch her and like all this other stuff and he does reveal i can't remember when he reveals it but he reveals that um, he had never had sex with any of his other offerings until Rhea. Um, you just had to rearrange your guts. To just make had to it rearrange happen. your guts. Yeah. I don't know why the other ones weren't more open to that. I do. I very clearly do. <laughs> that was me making a joke, but absolutely fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> if my organs have to be rearranged. Yeah. Your it's boyfriend too much Nick is too big. <laughs> It's too much commitment. Um, Maybe if we've been married a long time and that's right. still an ongoing issue. Right. We haven't found a workaround. I don't know if we're getting to marriage. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. I'm just – what happens next? <laughs> um. So she's very touched that, like, he hasn't slept with anyone ex- other than this other – original woman he hasn't had sex with anybody in like 200 years so um she's like oh maybe that's why he wants to do it five times a day every day forever basically uh so some more time goes by more sweet moments between them orpheus goes to get her some water that she can drink and cook with because the the blood water the blood water won't do it um and so he leaves her at the cottage and then the demon king shows up at the cottage to take Rhea away. Mm. And um, Rhea does try to fight him, but... He's the demon king. He's the demon king. And she's still very early in her training. Correct. Okay. And so she's unsuccessful. So when he's on his... When Orpheus is on his way back, he can smell the demon king and starts to flip the fuck out. And so he's, like, running around looking for her. can't find her. Um... 
And so um, he's like, well, maybe maybe she left me like the other one did. Maybe, maybe everything was a lie. Maybe she didn't really want to be here. And then he's like, wait, wait, wait. No, she kisses me. The other one never kissed me. She holds me. The other one never did that. She smiles at me for me, not just when I give her things. Like, she mm. really cares about me. She wouldn't have just left me. Um, and so he loses his shit and starts running back to the demon city. So the demon king can teleport. Um, his mm. name is Jabez. Um, Jabez can teleport. And so she's transported back to the castle, and there's this human woman there. And um, she's like, this human woman is like, you're free now. We've set you free. You're going to be okay. The nightmare is over. And she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening right now? She's like, no, I didn't get my guts rearranged to For not- nothing. <laughs> to not get dicked down by Orpheus every night. <laughs> Get your head out of your ass, random human lady. (laughs) Right. That's not, no, that's not why we're here. So she's like, clearly I'm not safe. Clearly these people are fucking nuts. So I'm just going to play along here and like Orpheus will come for me. So the woman is like, well, come here, you know, take a, take a bath you know, wash off that disgusting spell that he put on you, like, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And she's like, how does she know so much about him? Hmm, weird. Is it the original? It is. So she um, doesn't give her any privacy, really, after she gets out of the bath. And so Rhea is, like, going to get dressed again, and the woman is, like, staring at the scars on her belly from where he – um, rearranged her guts and, um, she's like, I knew it. I knew that you'd had sex with him. And she's like, what are you talking about? And like trying to cover up as quickly as she can. And she's, the woman is like totally misreading everything. And she's like, you don't have to be ashamed of what he made you do. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, she's like, no, this isn't like a Stockholm syndrome. No, like I asked him to do this. I don't understand. And she's like, well, I get it because it happened to me. And she like lifts her dress. Her name's Katarina. She has the same scars. Mm. And she's like, and now the only person that can even sort of maybe get me off is Jabez because he has a huge cock, but no human's ever going to do it for me. And even with Jabez, it's pretty fucking hit or miss at this point. So <laughs> she's like, I'm... <laughs> She's like, really? I'm sexually frustrated by my own choices. Basically. She's like, so I'm really sorry that you're going to be stuck fucking demons forever because, like, you're never – it's not going to work with a human anymore. She's like, perfect, because I want to keep fucking my demon. Literally the whole point here. (laughs) So, um – Ray is super confused, and she's like, how are you still alive? That was 200 fucking years ago. And apparently she made a deal with Jabez for Mm. him to keep her alive. So um, she, yeah, she really believes that she's doing Raya all kinds of favors. (laughs) Like, she really thinks she is. Um, And then Raya realizes Katerina was so, like, basically full of herself and just kind of a bitch that she never communicated anything with Orpheus Mm -hmm. because she's like, oh, God, he forced himself on me all the time. And Rhea's like, did did you ever, like, let him know that you weren't in the mood? Or did you ever say no? And she's like, I couldn't say no. Like, I did. Like, pretty regularly. He was cool. Like, he just made me soup. Right. Like <laughs> if I said I didn't want to fuck, he'd be like, okay, here's a present. Like, honestly. Right. right. She's like, okay, whatever you say. Um, so um apparently Katerina and Jabez have been watching Orpheus's house for quite some time. They can't see inside, but they could mm. see outside. And so, um, Yeah, so I covered all of this, except the Demon King is half elf. So he's half elf and half demon. And he's from a different world. 
Okay. Because he's a hybrid, his home world was like they hated him there. Mm. And so he opened a portal, took a bunch of demons with him so that he could grow their numbers and their strength and then go back and take over his home world. Mm. So he has all this magic and stuff because he's half elf, which is why he can teleport and all that other stuff. Um, so essentially they took Rhea to get Orpheus to the castle because Katarina, part of the deal she made with Jabez was that, um, she would be allowed to kill Orpheus someday Mm. once they learned how to kill a dusk walker, she'd be allowed to kill him. And so, um, really it had nothing to do obviously with rescuing Rhea. It was about getting Orpheus to the castle. Mm -hmm. So, um, Rhea stands up and is like, absolutely not. Like he is, he's kind and caring and you guys are fucking nuts and blah, blah, blah. And Katarina gets pissed and she's like, well, here's what we're going to do. I was just going to go ahead and kill you, but now you are going to watch while he picks me over you. You're just a cheap replacement for me anyway. Like he's been looking to replace me all these years, blah, blah, blah. So you're going to watch. And then we're going to feed you to him. And then I'm going to kill him. Like, she did, like, a whole villain monologue about it. Yeah, I was going to say, it. she really covered that whole monologue. Full villain monologue about it. So, um, then uh, we flip to Orpheus. He's super confused, super upset, and he's terrified of what's happening to Rhea while he's not there. So, he gets to the castle. He finds Katarina. Um Katarina tells him that Rhea agreed to be her replacement for the Demon King so that Katarina could go back with Orpheus. She's like, I know you've been wanting me all these years, and Rhea made that possible for us. Also, that's not the same as him choosing No. So. No, no, no. Um, So he's like he feels super betrayed that Rhea would do that and then he's Rightly like so but did she i need to talk to her like i'm not interested in talking to you i need to find her so then katarina gets more and more angry and breaks one of the little like decorations that Rhea made for his antlers mm. and so he loses his shit he's like Rhea told me she'd be really upset if they got broken or anything happened to them. And Katarina broke it. Like, why would you do that? Like, he's really upset <laughs> that Rhea's going to be upset. Like, that's why he's mad. Um, so then um, she suddenly appears. The Demon King had had her cloaked in the room to watch this whole thing. So mm-hmm. um, he couldn't. Orpheus couldn't see or smell her. So she suddenly appears because apparently she nailed him in the seam, which is the same as nailing him in the balls, to get him to let go of her so that she could run after Orpheus. So she's, like, sprinting full force at him, and she looks really angry. And he's like, she must be really upset about the bell from my antler. (laughs) He's like, oh, no. But it turns out Katarina is behind him. With a knife, and she was about to crack mm. his skull. But I forgot to mention, they kidnapped another de- dusk walker. And, and they like, figured it out at some point. That yeah. That's how you kill him. Tortured him repeatedly until they figured out how to kill him. So she um, tackles Katarina to the ground. Then Orpheus fights Jabez. Rhea fights Katarina. Big fight scene. Um, lots of things happen. Eventually, Rhea kills Katarina, mm. and um, Orpheus tells the Demon King, he's like, listen, we are evenly matched. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. You're not going to kill me. Clearly, I'm not going to kill you. I want to go the fuck home. I'm not interested in doing this anymore. And like, Just let me live in peace, bro. Right. Like, I have no desire to yeah. lead a revolution. I just want to go home. So um, Jabez is pissed. And he's like, listen, your human killed my human, unfucking acceptable. So Orpheus had been like scooping Rhea up to like leave with her and sets her down because he thinks Jabez is gonna like teleport at him again. So he sets her down so he can be ready. But instead of teleporting, he throws the knife like into Rhea's back. Mm. And um he 
the Demon King's like, fair is fair, bitch. Mine's dead. Yours is dead. But you better hope she dies really fast because with all the blood she's bleeding, your hunger's going to come out real quick. I'd really hate if you ate her while she was still alive. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, ew. Wow. Horrifying. He doesn't sound like he should really be leading people. No, he does not sound like a leader of demons. I was going to say leader of men, but he's not. No. 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 Yeah, it seems like he has some selfish motivators that are not for his people. No. No. He clearly doesn't give a shit about a single person ever. So, um, yes. Raya is dying. She's, like, on the ground, bleeding a lot. Um, and he, it's so sad. He's, like, begging her not to leave. He's like, you promised you wouldn't leave me. Like, you promised. Like, please don't. And she's, like, not really sad that she's dying. Because when he had told her about, eventually, like, through all this, she'd been like, do I want to give him my soul? She's like, I don't really want to live forever. Like, I don't really. It's not that I don't want to be with Orpheus. It's that I, like, I don't particularly want eternal life. It hasn't been great up to this point. Like, yeah. I'm not really interested in prolonging it. But she's like, man, I really don't want to leave him. Like he's going to blame himself and he's, you know, she's like, you'll find another, you'll find another companion. And he's like, but they won't be you and they won't make me trinkets and they won't. And he's like listing all these things about her. Yeah. And she's like, um, she declares her love. Um, and so she's not dying that quickly. No, but it's happening with a quickness now that she's, like, declared her love. It's, like, really happening. Mm. So then she's, like, you know what? How do I give you my soul? And he's, like, you just have to want to. And she's, like, okay, well, I do. So fucking what now? Like, I'm bleeding out, bitch. Like, move <laughs> it along. <laughs> So there's this whole thing where she feels this burning in her chest and this, like, light comes out of her and she, like, holds it up to Orpheus and he eats it. Ops, why do you seem so confused about that, Hannah? <laughs> well, well, because she's confused about it. And then she's like, <laughs> she's like, of course he ate it. He eats everything. Like, <laughs> as she's dying. So she's, like, taking her last breaths and she's like, of course he fucking ate it. And she's like, well, I guess it didn't work because this is me. I'm out. I'm really sorry. Like, she's, like, apologizing to him. And she dies. And he's, like, holding her. It goes to his point of view. He's, like, holding her in his arms. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, I did what I was supposed to do. You're supposed to live forever now. Like, what the fuck is this? And she, like, turns to ash, like, in his arms. And he's like, holy fuck. Like, Oh, God. And so he's, like, losing his mind. So he's like, well, maybe maybe she's not dead. Like, maybe she's still alive mm -hmm. somewhere. Like, I have to go find her. So he, like, searches the whole castle. The demon king is heckling him. And he's like, I will literally fucking kill you. Get away from me. I have to find her. So he's running through the woods. He goes and checks his house. And she's not there. And he's everywhere. And he can't find her. But he can sort of smell her sometimes and like sort of thinks he can hear her voice and he's like I'm I've gone insane like she really is dead <laughs> like I've gone nuts but of course she's not dead um ta-da um how long was she gone this like um it seemed like it was a day or two okay um so she comes to with Orpheus kind of like over him while he's running through the woods, and she's like, this is different and new. I am a ghost. <laughs> like, she's like, hold on. Because she's, like, holding up her hands, and she's like, well, I'm I'm translucent, which is new. Um, and she's, like, yelling for him, and he clearly can't hear her. And she's like, well, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what? this is not going to work. And she's like, I really wish I were solid again. And then she become solid again but he's moving so fast he's like gone in the woods and so some demons show up and eat her because he took off and doesn't know that she's there so she comes to again over top of orpheus and she's like well that was a super unpleasant way to die <laughs> like 
cross that off my list of things to do in the future because that fucking sucked. Don't want to do that again. So she like comes in front of him to where he can see her ghost and he's like, but this isn't, you're not supposed to be like this. How can you be with me if I can't touch you? Like, Mm -hmm. like I want to cuddle. Like, what are we going to do? And she's like, I need you to take me home. And he's like, but you're not at home. Like, your body's not at home. I already looked. And she's like, I know. I understand. I need you to take me home. It's not safe for my body here. I need you to take me home. And he's like, okay, fine, whatever. Sprints home. She becomes to their cottage. Okay. She becomes physical again, and he like loses his mind. He's like, he is crying. She didn't realize he could cry. He's like leaking blood what is his blood essentially from his little eye sockets um because he's so upset about everything um and um then she he wants to like hold her and feel her and all this and she's like I don't I don't want this like I don't want you like this she's like so you're gonna have to catch me And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't want to chase you. And she's like, but I want you to chase me. So she just goes incorporeal over and over again. Every time he catches her, she goes incorporeal until he gets really mad. Like he gets really mad. His eyes are bright red. Um, And she, he catches her again and he's like, I've got you. And she says, if your dick isn't immediately in my pussy, it doesn't count and goes incorporeal again Eventually, he catches her. They bang. It's super violent, um, but she's into it. That's what she wanted. Um, He's still trying to hold back because he doesn't want to hurt her, and she's like, what do you not understand? I literally can't die. Like, fucking go for it. (laughs) Like, come on now. Give me those crab claws. Which he does. (laughs) So. (laughs) No. (laughs) Immediate regret on your face. Immediate regret on your face. Just the logistics. Yeah. So then it's very sweet. He takes care of her. He cleans her up. They go inside. They bang again, but with her on top. And they had never done that before. He's like, well, I've never done this before with anybody ever. And she's like, great. Well, I'm excited. I'm going to I'm gonna leave out some of the details because just because they don't. That, yeah, it's a safe space to leave out details. I don't I don't think we need them. <laughs> they don't need to be said. But like <laughs> his tentacles hold her while they bang. And she's like, Can you not do that while I'm trying to ride you? Because it's like inhibiting a lot. And he's like, I I mean I can, but I really don't like it. So she adjusts so his tentacles are holding her ankles and she bangs him. And there's lots of declarations of love. Everything's amazing. And then he's like, after they have their sweet solidifying fuck and everything, he's like, will you make me another bell <laughs> for my antlers? And she's like, yes, of course I will. Um, So, honestly, that's really it. The owl shows up again at some point to explain that she's actually Orpheus's mom, which is weird. Um... <laughs> <laughs> of course. Why would the owl be obviously the antelope headed man mother? Uh, well, of course. And she's like, um, you better get him to do a spell so that you don't get pregnant. And she's like, I can't get pregnant. We're not the same species. And she's like, Well, you couldn't get pregnant before, but you're a phantom now. So she can she has two mm-hmm. forms. You're a phantom now, so you can. So you may want to figure that out. Um, which is fun. Thanks, Owl Mom. Appreciate it. Like, should I call you Mom Owl, Owl Mom? What What do you prefer? Owl Mom. Owl Mom. Um, so, yeah. That's really it. And then she, he offers to go back to the village to, like, kill all the people who were mean to her. Um, and she's like, are you going to eat them? And... He's like, well, I could, but that that will change me. And she's like, no. He's like, well, maybe she maybe she doesn't like me. Maybe she wants me to be more human. And she's like, no, we should give them to the other Duskwalker. He's very stupid and could use a little bit more humanity. And he's like, oh, 
I really love that that came full circle. <laughs> so that's what he does. He goes and he he kills all the people who were mean to her. So that's the book. There is another one that follows the dumber dusk walker. Um, so. Huh. Yeah. Seems like a perfectly fine monster smut book. Yeah, it's just, it's the eating people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It's, it's the it's just, eating people. It's really hard for me to, to suspend belief with the eating people. Seams, tentacles, frills. Okay. Not flare. <laughs> <laughs> not flair but like the eating people was just okay it was a central theme and there was like a constant threat that if she got scared or got her period he was gonna eat her because the smell of her blood would be too much but look at all that they overcame to be together you're right they did yeah. Okay. So they rating did. system, rating scale. I don't know. Antlers. Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Cinnamon rolls. Aw. Bells. We could do bells. We could do bells. Um. Hmm. Total transparency. I gave this book one star on Goodreads right after I finished it because I was so like, what the fuck? We're just, we're just gonna end with him giving humans to his buddy to eat. That's how we're going to end. <laughs> humans that had it coming. I mean, our, uh, an argument could be made. Fair. Um, but, yeah, it, total transparency, I did do one star. And I think I think that my, my review was something about, like, why are we eating so many people? It doesn't matter. Ironically, the way in which you reviewed this book – Verbally. Right. I would have assumed it was a higher rating. So I liked the story a lot. Like the story was really interesting. It was mm -hmm. like a Beauty and the Beast thing a little bit. Um, and I did like the story. Mm -hmm. But some of the details were just like. like. And I think you left out some of the, the details, right? I did, yeah. So I think that's why I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. And you're like, but it's, it's really the eating people, Chelsea. And I'm like, they didn't eat that many people. And you're like, oh, but they did. There were 500 pages. There was a lot. Yeah. There was a lot. And I, I left out some things. And some things in the sex scenes were like, oh, no. <laughs> and I have, I, you know, I have read some monster smut. That's sure. not the issue, clearly. I was just like, what? No, I don't. I didn't like that. Um so the story itself, the storyline itself, I really liked. It was just some of the details took away from the story for me. Okay. Um, so one star was probably a little bit harsh. <laughs> well, but if it's like Liberty Bells, like those are very large bells. True. And he is a large man. Are these more like hand bells? Like little like trinkety, like Well, holiday? they were like like jingle bells were, were what were on his antlers. Okay. Um, so I could do – I would give it – if I could separate the ratings into, like, the story and the the details, okay. it would be – the story would be, like, probably a 7.5 out of 10. I really liked the story. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. But the details of it made it, like, a 2.5 out of 10. So if we split it, I guess 5 out of 10. I was going to say 4 out of 10. 4, 5, 4.5, four sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll bring it to, like – Two out of five. Two out of five. We can do two and a half out of five if you feel better. It, between a two and a two and a half. Okay. <laughs> We're Somewhere between hairs. a two We're and a two and a half now. of jingle bells, not liberty bells, is not where liberty we bells. land on this one. Yes. Um, let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you'd like us to review next. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And tell all your friends. And tell all your friends. And we'll see you next time, Smut Sluts. Bye, y'all. Bye. Well, that's it for this week's Mutt Sluts. We hope it was good for you, because it sure was great for us. If you're digging what we're doing, it would mean a lot if you'd take a minute to rate and review the show wherever you're listening right now. We 
baby, tell that sexy someone to lend us an ear. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next week. Stay smutty.